If you want somebody of value, you have to become valuable. And in the doing so, you're not only becoming more magnetic, but you're basically transmitting to the world and to the universe your own value, your own fullness, your own depth. I've seen enough now to know that people like that do not stay alone very long. People like that, they stand out. People like that are so attractive, regardless of physical looks, right? Those are the people that are incredibly attractive and are incredibly valuable. And those are the people that the universe will just deliver new prospects to. Welcome to the Embodied Relationship Experience. My name is John Wineland. Before we jump into the content today, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. It really helps us to get the content out. Also, feel free to leave a question or if there's something specific that you want me to cover on a future episode, leave that as well. We will check them. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please uh, rate and review. It also helps us to get the content out. If you resonate with the content here and you want to dive deeper into the practices that I discuss, I would invite you to try the Embodied Relationship Experience platform, which is a global membership with over 500 members from all around the world, all dedicated to practicing and liberating consciousness and love on the planet. Uh, this has uh, got thousands of hours of content from workshops that I've done over the past 10 years on every possible um, topic from uh, creating sexual polarity to cultivating your own personal practice to repair practices to embodiment practices to meditative practices uh, practices around liberating grief practices around uh, creating pleasure in your body so the embodied relationship experience platform is a great place for you to dive deeper there is a link below there's also a, uh, a monthly coaching call with me. So if you want to ask me questions about your specific experiences and what you're working with and what you're going through, you can jump on that call. It's a small group coaching call where I can talk to you directly and answer any of the questions that you have directly. There is a link below, as I said. Uh, there's a free seven-day trial if you want to try it just for a week and gorge on as much content and practice as you like. And uh, we hope to see you there. In today's podcast, I want to dive into the question that I probably get most from single people who are part of my work, and that is, how do I call in the one? How do I magnetize sacred partnership? How do I create sacred union when at this point I'm dating, I'm working with the apps, you know, I'm not finding the right person, I keep attracting the same person over and over again. How do I shift that? And in today's podcast, I want to dive deep into debunking some of the myth around calling in the one. And instead, I want to offer this concept that is about magnetizing sacred intimacy, about magnetizing the partner that you want to bring in. And there's a very different and very specific practice to magnetizing um, better <laughs> prospects, I guess you would say than uh, simply visualizing them or making a list of their traits or you know any number of things that people try to do. And as I go through, I'm going to start by talking about why s using certain practices like making lists and doing visualizations do not work and what I believe does work. Uh, we can make all the lists we want, we can visualize all we want. And I'm not saying that those things don't carry some weight. They do, right? Anytime you visualize something, you're sort of finding a way to move towards it. But what works much better is to become magnetic to the kind of partner that you want to attract. And what that means is you become so valuable in your embodied experience, in the way that you carry yourself, in what you transmit through your body, heart, and mind naturally, that you become incredibly valuable and attractive to the kind of partner you want to attract. Now, this is different because it takes the focus off of <clears throat> another and focusing on them, you know, the perfect relationship or the perfect man or the perfect woman. 
And instead, it turns the focus back on you. What do you need to do to become so valuable and so magnetic to those that you want to attract? It's a whole new way of looking at things. And I'm going to lay out today uh, the way to work with this. And I wrote a chapter in my book about this called Let Them Appear. And I think the first thing to emphasize about letting them appear versus, you know, seeking them or chasing them is that you are relaxed. <laughs> you are relaxed in your own life. You are getting full in your own life. You are creating a life and a way of being and a way of living that is full, that is magnetic. And anytime we focus on something we don't have, anytime we turn our attention to that which we lack, we are transmitting lack. <laughs> we are looking to another to complete us. Rather than becoming whole and complete in and of ourselves, and then allowing the universe to just deliver somebody to our front doorstep. And I know it sounds a little bit woo woo, but you know, those of you who, um, who are law of attraction geeks, or those of you who really understand how magnetism and energy work, you know, it shouldn't be that out in left field. The basic concept is when we are full, when we are whole and complete in ourselves, when we are integral in our own beings, and when we have cultivated the skills and traits that are valuable, I really want to emphasize that word value. You know, sometimes that's considered taboo to say, am I valuable to the person that I find most attractive? It's a tough question, right? Because it, it, it makes us focus on what we need to improve upon, what we need to heal, where we need to grow, what we need to transmit what we need to practice because, you know, relationships nowadays are really about value, right? We want to be with partners that are valuable to us, that nourish us, that um, inspire us. It's less about like it has been for the last, you know, hundred some odd thousand years. It's less about procreating and it's less about security, right? And, you know, even as as early as the 1950s, it was still about security, especially for women, right? Finding a man that could make you feel secure. And I'm not saying that finding a man who's a provider is a bad thing. I, I think that's actually quite a, a beautiful thing, but it's less about that being the driving force. And it's more about being the human, and I'm just gonna use you know, women in this instance, being the person that a man who can provide for you would want to provide for you because we have so much choice, right? We have so much choice. There's so many options and what we fail to recognize oftentimes because, you know, we're egoic beings is that, you know, we may or may not be valuable to the person <laughs> that we are most attracted to. And then we wonder why we are attracting and settling for people that do not uh, fully light us up, that do not meet our um, you know, beautiful lists of attributes that we want to attract in a partner. So I'm going to dive into you know, the kind of step-by-step, -step, the process that I recommend for calling in and magnetizing those to whom you're most attracted. So let's start with why just dating unconsciously with some vague notion of wanting to, you know, be in love doesn't work. And, you know, this has been proven now, you know, for 40, 50 years that we are always going to attract somebody who matches our unhealed childhood wounds. So what that means is that we're all coming into relationship, we're all moving through the world with a set of childhood wounds. What are the things that we did not get from our parents that we seek in, or we unconsciously seek oftentimes in another? And left to our own devices, just kind of floating through the world, not really thinking about, you know, who we attract or how we attract them or, you know, what we're transmitting into the world. We're pretty much guaranteed <laughs> to continue to attract people that fit, you know, uh, 
Imago therapy talks a lot about this Imago match. And our Imago matches are pretty much guaranteed either way, right? We're always, always, always going to attract somebody that causes us to address our childhood wounds, that triggers our childhood wounds. We're going to trigger theirs. And this is kind of this magnetic polarity that works in relationship. And that's fine. You know what I mean? It's, it's, there's not a problem if we're attracting people who trigger our wounds. It's actually a gift, right? It actually allows us to grow beyond our current state and vice versa. It also allows us to heal, right? If we find the right partner who is willing to do the work, who's willing to address how they trigger your childhood wounds and are willing to be open and vulnerable about their wounds and help you address theirs, then there's an incredible uh, opportunity for healing. The problem is, is that most of us enter relationship unconscious about what our wounds are. Most of us enter a relationship unconscious about what creates massive amounts of value for the partner that we want to attract. So the reason why modern dating is so challenging is because most of us are wandering through the dating apps, trying to figure out how to get the perfect partner. And this is the other piece that I find doesn't work. We're entering relationship more from a place of what we can get versus a place of where we can give and grow. And that is a fundamental difference. Now, because we continue to attract people who are vibrating and transmitting in the same kind of, let's call it, level of consciousness that we are, if we're seeking to get something, we're seeking to get love, we're seeking to get completed, we're seeking to get security, we're seeking to be significant, right? We're seeking all of these things. We're going to attract somebody who is also seeking something versus somebody who is full with a lot to give. So the first fundamental shift that we need to make when we are, you know, back on the dating scene is what do I have to give, right? And how would I want to give it, right? Now, of course, I'm not saying there's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be loved, but if that's the primary motivation, then usually that stems from some kind of lack of self-love and self-care. There are plenty of people who are very happy, you know, being alone and waiting. Why? Because they are full with their own self-care. They're full with a deep relationship to the divine and to life. They're full with their capacity to give and express. They have done the work to become a whole and complete human being. And they have done the deep reflective, I would even say the ruthlessly reflective work that allows them to address both what they have to give, primary question, like what do I have to give? And also what makes me valuable? If we just really focus on those two questions versus where is the person that's going to take me out of my misery? Where is the person that is going to finally make me feel safe and secure that I can walk into the sunset with? Where is the person who's going to, you know, finally give me the things that have been lacking in all my other relationships back down to my parents? So the first step in uh, magnetizing yourself for a very deep and beautiful and fulfilling partnership is to shift the intentionality, right? To shift the framework of where can I be met, for example, to how can I meet, right? How can I meet? How can I give? What do I have to give? How have I created myself as somebody who can meet another? And I'm going to get into sort of a step-by-step -step process that I take people through. But I think first and foremost, let's just start with those two questions. What do I have to give? Feel free to write them down. What do I have to give? And, and I'll get more into this question as we move along. What would make me valuable to the person that I want to attract? Before we dive into the meat of this process, there's a couple concepts I want to lay out. The first is that we are constantly, constantly, constantly 
evoking both the same and the reciprocal from our romantic partners and also from the world, but I'll leave that for another episode. So what that means is that, like I said earlier, if we are coming from a place of lack, we are also going to attract somebody who feels lack, right? If we are coming from a place of wanting to get versus wanting to give, we are also going to attract somebody who wants to get. And these things in and of themselves are not problematic. Of course, we all have needs that we want to fill. And right? how we go about meeting those needs, though, is, uh, is tricky. So the second piece of that, this concept is a little more nuanced, but I think you'll, you'll stay with me here, is that we're not only attracting the same from partners, right? But we're attracting the reciprocal. So if you are a masculine being looking to get something from a feminine partner, you are going to attract a feminine partner who also is looking to get something from you. And what that sets up is this dynamic after, then this is all kind of after the first six months or one year of honeymoon period. What's gonna, what it's gonna set up is this sense of always needing the other to be giving something before we can give right? And the reciprocal piece of that is if you are a masculine partner, you're looking for certain, you're looking to get certain traits. Well, the person you attract, the feminine being you attract is also looking to get the reciprocal of those traits. So not only are we attracting someone who's sort of vibrating, vibing, let's say at the same level, but we're also going to attract that they're wanting the reciprocal of, of what we want. So if we want energy and love light and devotion and all the things that masculine beings tend to crave, we're going to attract somebody who's craving and wanting to be filled with the reciprocal of those presence, uh, groundedness, uh, integrity, clarity, all of the things that, you know, many feminine beings are craving. So we're constantly both attracting the sameness and we're also attracting the reciprocal. And this goes for our wounds as well. So. If we are unaware, for example, that we are incredibly sensitive to anger, I'm just going to use this as an example because it's a, it's a pretty clear example. Let's say you grew up in a home where anger was very present and you became uh, very sensitive to anger and you have not healed that wound, you are going to attract someone with the reciprocal wound. You're going to attract someone who has unowned anger. And there you go. You are both attracting somebody who um, wants the same things that you want, you know, vibing at the same level, but you're also going to attract somebody who is bringing the reciprocal wound. And that is why, as I break down this process, you'll see it's so important to really take an inventory and really take stock of what it is that you are bringing to the game. I talked about this a few episodes ago, but I'm going to go into it now from the space of preparing yourself for relationship versus being in relationship. Because when we are in between relationships, that is a golden opportunity for us to take stock, to take a little break, to take what I would call a masculine or a feminine cleanse. And this is, you know, irrespective of gender identity or sexual orientation. To, to take a cleanse from the idea of relationship with other and turn it towards the relationship with yourself. And one of the first things that I always recommend for people when they get out of long-term relationships or they've had a series of shorter-term relationships that don't work is take a fucking break, right? Allow the idea of relationships. Let go of the apps. Let go of seeking. Let go of trying to, you know, be filled again by another partner and really take space to look at yourself without relationship being part of the equation. Make the relationship with you, make the relationship with life, make the relationship whatever you consider the divine to be primary, right? And in doing that, you can address all of the things that I'm going to talk about in this episode. So just be aware that we're constantly evoking, right? We're evoking people who are vibing. I'm looking to get, she's going to be looking to get. 
I'm looking to get, he's going to be looking to get. Now, what they're looking to get is often reciprocal, even though we're vibing at the same, at the same level. I hope that makes sense to you. Another problem that I will see often in people who are entering the dating world is that they're bringing with them a fantasy. They're bringing with them a fantasy of the perfect feminine partner or the perfect masculine partner, the conscious man, as you will, or the devotional goddess, if you will. And they've created this fantasy normally based on things that have been unhealed from their childhood wounds. And they are living in this fantasy of finding this perfect partner. Let me tell you, the perfect partner does not exist. Everybody is going to be bringing their shit. And so if you, unless you find somebody who had the perfect childhood and was, you know, trained and initiated into manhood or womanhood in the perfect way, you are going to be working with a set of baggage. So this idea that there is some perfect partner that is going to be easy for you has to be squashed. I'm sorry, that just does not exist. I have not seen it in any of the relationships that I've had or any of the relationships that I've worked with. I work with tons of couples over the years. All of them have to work through these issues. All of them have to address what are the wounds that I have not fully taken care of in myself and what am I doing to be more valuable to my partner? So what I'm suggesting is you get started on that work before you enter relationship, and that will absolutely shift who you attract and what level of work they're bringing to the game. Okay, so let's get into the process. The first thing, you've heard this before, the first thing you're going to do is you are going to make a list of the qualities that you crave in a partner. Now this works if you're heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, doesn't really matter, right? So let's just say, let's just start with the feminine. Let's say that you are craving a masculine partner who is um, a provider. Let's say that you're craving a masculine partner who is present, who has integrity, who uh, is deep, who has a you know, profound spiritual practice, who's in great shape, for example, you know, attractive, um, who is, I'm just you know, making the list of things I hear every day, who is able to lead, right? Who is able to l go deep sexually, who has the capacity to own his shadows and dark side, uh, who can bring a full spectrum of sexual practice, right? I'm just, again, these are, these are lists I hear from women all the time. So let's just say that's the kind of, of man that you want to attract, the kind of human that you want to attract as a masculine partner. So you make that list and you get as clear as possible. And one practice that I did that I think is really beautiful is you can go through the past you know, few relationships or few years of relationships or dating and pull attributes from the specific, you know, people that you've dated, sort of like, you know, constructing the perfect man uh, through an amalgam of, you know, five or six relationships or a few of your past partners. So you can say, hey, you know, John was, you know, John was very present and John was uh, very expressive and John was very much in integrity and John had these traits, but he was lacking in the capacity to provide or protect or go deep sexually, you know, and, but, but Abe <laughs> before John had all of those traits, had certain traits, but he lacked integrity and clarity and you know what I mean? And so you can construct from your experience traits that many of your ex-partners have um, provided and construct in your list this amalgamum that you can feel because you have an experience of being with men or women that have, you know, really had a strong grip on certain traits. And when you're done with that, you will come up with a, a pretty strong amalgamum of uh, positive traits and attributes that you want to attract. 
So now you have a list and now you have a, uh, an embodied memory of, of people who gave you to some degree or another those traits who really you know, embody those traits. You have an experience of being with somebody who in one way or another met some level of those traits. Now, maybe there are certain traits that nobody has ever met and that's fine too, but you have a list of the things that you value, the things that you're seeking. And rather than just visualize them or rather than visualize this perfect partner that meets them, the next step is to literally start seeing those things in, I'm just gonna stay with the feminine for now, start seeing those things in all of the men that you come in contact with. So let's say you're at the store and you know one of the guys who's you know helping you know put stuff on the shelves you can feel you know that he has a very you know he has a lot of clarity or a lot of uh, devotion right or he's he's very helpful he's he's very helpful in leading right he can lead you to find the exact item that you want you can actually start to feel in all of the men that you meet these attributes, one or two or more of them. Now, you know, you might have to imagine these things in these men, but once you start to see past the surface of the men that you come in contact with all day, every day, or the men that you actually go out on dates with, you'll start to recognize that these attributes are to some degree or another in virtually everybody, right? you know, to lesser degrees in some men, to greater degrees in others, but all of them have this capacity. What you're training, what you're training in yourself is the capacity to see these attributes. What happens so often in relationship is that we train ourselves to see what people aren't bringing. We train ourselves to see what's missing. And so before you actually step into relationship, I'm suggesting, because this will be incredibly valuable, I'm suggesting that you, you work the muscle that sees providership, that sees kinghood, that sees warriorhood, that sees integrity, that sees presence, that sees all of the things that you value in all of the men around you. Might be, they might be partners of some of your friends, they might be men you meet out on dates. They might be men you just come in contact with every day, but you're training yourself to start to, to recognize that these attributes exist to some degree or another in every man. And what happens when you start to recognize something and see it over and over? You begin to attract more of it. What happens when you begin to recognize uh, subtle attributes in one person? you'll start to see them in another. So our capacity to recognize someone's goodness, our capacity to recognize someone's strength, our capacity to recognize someone's devotion, someone's openness, someone's radiance, leads us to be able to recognize it in others. And so as we get better at recognizing these things and practicing these things day in, day out with every person we meet, not only do we feel better, not only do we get nourished, right? We get filled, but we begin to attract more of it because, you know, attraction is magnetic. What we focus on will increase. What we focus on will present itself. What we focus on will appear. And so training yourself to get really good at recognizing the attributes um, in many, many men, many prospective partners, will absolutely help you not only discern, but see these attributes in a future partner. Now, of course, the opposite is true. If you're a masculine being who wants to attract a radiant, devotional, highly energetic feminine being like most men that I know, then you make that list, you track your past partners, right? Which ones of them were most creative? Which ones of them were most um, radiant, which ones of them were most devotional, which ones of them were most healthy <laughs> or healed, let's say, or um, able to express their heart's truth, 
which ones were most responsive, which ones were most playful, which ones were, you know, had a beautiful range of energetics that really lit you up. And you go ahead and make that list and then begin to see those things in the women or the humans that you come in contact with, you know, throughout the day. It's the same thing. You're, you're tuning your nervous system to these traits, which will in very mystic ways, draw more people with these traits to you. One final note on this, it's incredibly important for you to be clear on what the top traits are. You know, we might have a laundry list of competing traits, right? We might have a laundry list of somebody who is, you know, incredibly devotional, but totally dedicated to their work. We might want somebody to be, you know, available for support, but we want them to be, you know, a mogul. <laughs> and so it's important that we get clear on what are the most important traits. So as you, as you create this list, really ask yourself, what are the top two or three things that are most important? What are the top two or three things? And oftentimes we're surprised when we really dive into this. So for example, I'll, I'll speak to, to feminine practitioners right now. You may want somebody who's a provider and you also may want somebody who is deeply integral and deeply practiced, right? You might want somebody who is very present. You might also want somebody who can be your best friend. You might also want somebody who, you know, is adventurous and wants to travel the world. You might also want somebody who's, you know, who has enough free time that they can be available for you. And you might have to choose which ones are the most important. Nobody is going to hit every fucking item on your list. You're just not going to do it. So what is most important? What is most important for most women that I run into, you know, contact with, that I come into contact with, there is something about depth and there's something about the capacity to really be with the capacity to really be present. So a man may be a very good provider, but he might not be fully able to be present with you. He might not be able to penetrate your heart. He might not be able to be with all that you are. And so getting clear on which one of these things, now I know women that are listening to this are going, I want both, I want both. Great, I hope you find both. <laughs> um, but being clear on what is the most, what are the top two or three things that are, are just crucial? And then allowing space for the others to be negotiated and worked with over time is also really important clarification for you. Because once we are presented with a prospective partner, we want to be able to discern, can they meet the deepest desires of my heart? What are the, the deepest desires of my heart versus just things that are nice or versus things that I've always thought I wanted? or versus things that I have always thought I needed, right? You may make your own money. If, you know, if you're a woman who, you know, under 40, chances are you make more money than most men under 40, right? But can they penetrate your heart? Do they know how to lead you when you want to be led? Do they have clarity of spirit, right? Are they devotional to love? These are things that will often be more valuable than them making more money than you. Now, maybe not, that's up to you to decide, but it's important to have that conversation. Maybe you have that conversation with your, you know, trusted friends. Maybe you have that conversation with, you know, the goddess. Maybe you have that conversation, you know, with yourself, but it's really important to take some time and consider what are the most important traits rather than dropping 20 in that would be really nice what are the things that will cover, let's just say 80% of your heart's happiness, of your relaxed nervous system, of your capacity to trust. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. So you have a list, 
you've identified the things that are most important on that list, the things that really fill you up, the things that will be more important than superficial things. You might want somebody who's good looking, but somebody who penetrates your heart on a deep level is more valuable, right? And again, keeping in mind that there is no perfect partner, right? There is no perfect partner. And oftentimes somebody who knows what they want in the world, somebody who's on purpose, somebody who is making a deep impact in the world is most important to you. For others, sometimes being able to be penetrated by love, to be, to be led in the proper way, to, to have a deep presence and to be embodied and clear, you know, in spirit, those are more important. And oftentimes we want both and that's fine. Like I said, I hope you find both, but getting really clear on your list and what are the primary attributes of your list. Now, where the rubber meets the road is you're going to make a second list. And the second list is who do I have to be? What do I have to develop? What do I have to heal? What do I have to um, become skilled in, in order to be valuable? to this person. And what are the key traits? Let's say you come up with the top three or four traits that are most important for you. What do I have to cultivate in my own being? What do I have to cultivate in myself so that I am valuable, magnetic, so that a person with those traits can look at me and say, oh my God, that is a valuable human. That is a person that I want to get to know. That is a person that I want in my world. That is a person that I trust will nourish me. And these are often very difficult. So let me come at it from the opposite direction. Let me say that you are a man. You're a primary, primarily masculine being and you've wrote your list and you want to attract somebody who is um, deeply devotional to love you want to attract somebody who is filled with energy. You want to tr attract someone who is, you know, brings devotion to your purpose, you know, is devotional to you building what you want to build in the world. Um, you want to attract somebody who has healed the wounds or at least begun the process of healing the wounds of her past. You want to, you want to attract somebody who trusts you right? And who sees you. So let's say that those are things that you've written down on your list. Now, who do you need to become to become valuable to somebody that is filled with devotion, knows how to move energy through their body, is responsible around their healing and what they're bringing to the, to the relationship. I'm just going to use those three. And here's where we have to think about the reciprocal. We have to think about reciprocity. Because we're attracting polar opposites, we have to think about the attributes that uh, our polar opposite would attract or find attractive in us. So let's say you want a woman who's highly energetic, highly energetic, very expressive, filled with pleasure, able to move energy through her body, is just kind of a, a dynamo, right? Now, the reciprocal attribute that you have to create is your capacity to be with all of that energy. You have to create the capacity, the nervous system strength to be with all of that energy. And if you don't, you will be bowled over you will be, you know, moved, you will short circuit in the face of all of that energy. I know so many men who want to attract feminine being who's, you know, on fire, who's lit up, who really knows how to express, you know, energy and emotion and is able to really be um, a live wire of love, let's call it, but they haven't cultivated the nervous system capacity to really be with that. They haven't cultivated their capacity to create a container for that kind of energy when it's, when it's necessary. They haven't cultivated the attributes that a woman with that much energy or joy or love in her body would find valuable, right? And so often 
what men need to cultivate to be with that kind of uh, energetic being is ground, is nervous system stillness, is the capacity to be grounded presence. And until you cultivate that, you will not be able to hold, even if you attract, that kind of person. Let me give a couple of other examples I often hear from men. So if you are wanting to attract somebody that has true devotion in their heart, they're, they're devotional to love more than they're, say, devotional to making money, right? They're devotional to love more than, doesn't mean they can't make money, doesn't mean they shouldn't make money, but that love is primary. And that's how they live. That's what they orient to. Let's say you want to attract a woman like that. So how worthy of that devotion are you? That's a really tough question for men, right? How worthy of that kind of love devotion are you? For example, are you leaky with your sexual energy? Are you in integrity with the things that you say you are going to do or not do? Are you on purpose in the world? Are you contributing to the world in a way that would inspire somebody who has a devotional heart? Are you leading a life that you're inspired by that would inspire somebody with a devotional heart? Are you a giving and loving parent, for example? So those things and really taking a good hard look at what you have to become in order to inspire somebody with a devotional heart is often a hard checklist. You know, I will hear from men all the time that they have somebody who wants to love them, right? Who has somebody in their life who, who really wants to be devotional to them, but they're angry at them instead. <laughs> I've certainly had that experience, right? And usually what that means is that we are out of uh, some form of integrity in our life. And that can mean any number of things. It doesn't just always mean that we aren't keeping our word. That can be part of it. But it can often mean that we're not in integrity with our purpose. We're not in integrity with our soul's purpose. We're not in integrity with our heart. We're not in integrity with our own healing. We're not in integrity with the men around us, right? If going out and partying with the boys is more important than... Um, really tuning each other up as men, then chances are you're not going to be inspiring somebody with a devotional heart. So it's really important that you take a look, you know, uh, at what it is that you are doing or not doing and consider yourself as a prospective partner for somebody with those traits, with those really important and valuable traits. These are traits that are valuable. Someone with a devotional heart, for example, who's devotional to love above all else, I know for me, and I know for many of the men that I know, that's incredibly valuable. So what am I creating in myself that would be valuable to that human? And am I really doing that? Or am I just deluding myself into thinking that I'm doing that? Am I living in some kind of patriarchal arrogance that just assumes because I make money that I'll be valuable to somebody like that? I know so many men who are very successful who do not develop the traits of, of integrity, of embodied presence, of groundedness, of nervous system capacity, and all the money in the world doesn't elicit devotion from their partners. So it's a, it's a really ruthless reflection that I'm asking for here when you're talking about attracting the love of your life, when you're talking about attracting the person that you, you want to spend your life with. A final example I'll, I'll give, you know, for the masculine side is, and I hear this a lot from men, is suppose you want to attract somebody who is very sexually expressed, you know, a freak in the sheets, so to speak. And, um, and you'd be surprised how many men really crave that, right? Really crave a, you know, a fully expressed sexual being, right? Because sex is, is a place where a lot of energy is given. So, one of the things that nourishes the masculine, you know, to a very large degree is someone who can move sexual energy through their body, who is, you know, not afraid to, you know, play in both the light and dark realms of sexual practice. So most men want to attract that, but very few have cultivated the capacity to hold that 
or to inspire that or to lead that or to contain that in some way, right? And so it's a really important aspect because sex is one of those things that is so important in romantic relationships. It's so nourishing. It's so clarifying. It is, it is the juice, right? It is the juice. The sexual energy is the juice uh, that makes relationships truly full, let's say. They can be functional, but there's a big difference between functional and full. So let's say you're a man who really wants to attract that kind of partner. What have you done to cultivate your capacity to bring dark love? What have you done to bring your capacity for holding that kind of energy, to be wide in your body, to be wide in your nervous system, to be clear, to bring consciousness, to penetrate her heart, right? Uh, deep sex is always about being able to penetrate heart uh, both ways, right? So this is something that a lot of men just, you know, because there's not, you know, we're not taught in high school that this is a valuable attribute to be able to be a fully ranged uh, sexual being, right? We're just, you know, taught to be athletic or to, you know, um, to be attractive or, you know, have six pack abs, but there's so much more to it than that. And if that is something that you truly value in a partner, and of course, I would say the same for women as well, if you truly value someone who can go deep and bring God fuck, for lack of a better term, into your sex life, then what have you done to cultivate that in yourself? What have you done to cultivate the reciprocal of what they would find incredibly valuable? And I'm bringing this up because it's such a pain point in relationships. It is such a big pain point in relationships. And I think there are so many men that want those things, but have not cultivated the skill set. I mean, this is what we, you know, work on in our workshops. This is what we work on in teacher training. This is what we work on, you know, in the embodied relationship experience platform. There's a lot of practices that one can get into. If you feel like these are things that you need to work on, right? It goes way beyond going to the gym and being in good shape. Are you able to control your ejaculatory response? Are you able to last a long time or are you seven minutes, right? Most men average seven minutes of sex, right? So if you want to attract a partner that brings you that kind of joy and that kind of energy, what have you done to cultivate your body, mind, and nervous system strength? Another piece of this is if you, like most men I hear, many men I hear, will say, I want a woman who, who feels safe to surrender her heart to me, safe to surrender her heart and body to me. Well, have you become a man who's so trustable that she could do that, right? Have you become a man that has so much integrity around holding her heart or holding her body that she could do that? Or are you leaky with your sexual energy? So there's a, there's a lot to look at once we make this second list and we start to take a look at who we need to become in order to attract this person. Okay, so you've got this list of attributes that you want in a partner, and then you've got this list of things that you need to cultivate in order to become magnetic and valuable to that partner. So oftentimes people will be unclear about that second piece. What do I need to do to become magnetic to so-and-so, to this kind of partner? Well, great practice that I've done and I often recommend is go to somebody in your field or in your community that has many of these attributes that you value. Could be the partner of a friend of yours. And you go to them and you would say, you would go to you know your best friend's husband who you feel has a lot of these attributes and you would ask them, you know, what do you find most valuable in your partner? What do you crave the most? Or you go to a, a, a man friend who's single and you'd ask them, what are you looking for most? What do you value most in a feminine partner? And you'll get some amazing and surprising feedback. I know that's a vulnerable ask, but you know, this is, you know, no risk, no reward here. These are high stake games. Calling in the love of our life is a high stake practice. So don't be afraid to go to the men or women that you trust that you're not romantic with and ask them, you know, what would you need to see in me 
in order to, not that I'm going to go after you, but what would you need to see in me to feel that I'm magnetic to somebody who has some of these traits that you have? I think that will be uh, very illuminating for you to make that leap and ask that question. You can also bring it to your other men friends or women friends that are in great relationships who have, you know, the kind of sex life that you crave or have the kind of trust that you crave or, you know, exhibit the kind of devotion that you want to create and ask them, you know, what do you do? So you might ask, you know, let's say one of your women friends is in a great devotional, deep relationship. What do you do to, you know, to evoke more of his presence? What do you do to evoke the part of him that wants to take care of you? What do you do in order to, right? How do you behave behind closed doors and what skills and attributes do you bring? And that's another way for you to get more clear on this list. So don't be afraid to take a little time to really do the research. You know, so many of us are in such a hurry to get back in relationship that we don't actually stop and take the time to get clear on what we want, to get clear on where it's already around us, and to get clear on what we need to do in order to be attractive and valuable to that person. Okay, so now you have the list of things that you need to do. And does it mean that you need to be a master in all of these areas? No. But does it mean that you need to take action to improve yourself in these areas? Yes. And so rather than spend your time, you know, swiping on the dating apps, why not spend your time cultivating these attributes and really filling yourself up with, with these practices, with devotional practices, with grounding practices, with, you know, above and beyond just looking great and working out. How do you work out the deeper aspects of your nervous system, emotional body, sexual body? And luckily, there are lots of places where this can happen. Of course, you know, I teach this stuff all the time, so you can come see me, but there are many other people out there and there are many other places to go and get this work. There are women's groups, there are men's groups, there are programs, there are lots of places where you can um, go, you can work with uh, friends, you can ask for a mentor, you can go into therapy. So taking action, having a list is one thing, but unless you take action to really heal yourself in the places that you need to heal, to improve yourself in the places that you need to improve, to become more capable of, of moving energy, holding energy, all of those things, then it, it really, your list doesn't mean shit, right? It's just another list of things that you should do that you actually aren't doing. But one of the things that I say all the time, especially to the women in my programs, is that the things you are cultivating, the capacity to move energy, the capacity to express yourself as a sexual being, the capacity to be responsive, the capacity to speak your heart's truth in a way that he can metabolize. All of those things are so fucking valuable. And I can tell you, because I work with so many men and I've done this for so many years, men are dying for those traits and vice versa, right? There are so many women that are dying for presence, integrity, depth, groundedness, um, your capacity to live a deep purpose. So many, um, so many women are craving a man who's done the work, right? Who, and what does that mean, done the work? And this is true for you know, all humans, right? Who want to be in relationship. This is a really important piece in about taking action. And I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it just, I'm just gonna keep repeating it probably every other podcast. Um, you have to heal. And you can't spiritually bypass the wounds of your childhood or the wounds of your past relationship or the traumas that you've experienced. You can't bypass those because if you do, you're just going to attract somebody with, this, with the reciprocal level of unhealed wounds. I'm going to say that again. If you don't heal your own wounds, if you don't look at your own anger, if you don't look at your own shame, if you don't look at your own self-loathing, if you don't look at your own you know, areas where you were kinked or wounded, then you are just going to attract the reciprocal in your partner. 
So if you have a bunch of unowned anger, as I said earlier, and you haven't healed it or dealt with it, then you are going to attract somebody who is deeply wounded by anger. And what's that going to look like in your relationship? <laughs> now, of course, it won't show up at the beginning because in the beginning, everybody's hopped up on hormones and, and we won't know it, right? It won't show up in the first few dates. It won't show up, you know, two months in or three months in, but six months in or a year, you'll start to see it. Your unowned anger will deeply wound the part of them that had to grow up with unowned anger. And their, whatever it is that they do will trigger your unowned anger, you know? their neediness or, or their flakiness or, you know, their withdrawal will trigger your unowned anger. So this piece about healing is so important. We're so irresponsible, um, as a society in this area, right? So I'm talking about addressing the spiritual, the therapeutic, and you know, what my teacher would call the yogic, or I would call the embodied, right? We have to address ourselves on all of these levels. And as we do, as we heal the wounds of our past, as we get more full in our bodies and our capacity to move energy, to open, to, you know, to free ourselves as consciousness and love, as we do that, we fill up. We actually need somebody less. Doesn't mean we don't want them doesn't mean we don't have deep desires that we want to live out, but we need it less. There's less, we're less vibrating as empty and needy, and we're more vibrating as full and ready to give, right? And that is the most valuable thing that uh, a prospective partner of value will want. Somebody who's done the work Somebody who has done the work yogically, who's done the work therapeutically, who's done the work spiritually is valuable. And so to pretend that that person of value won't want a value above and beyond your ability to make money or look great is naive. And what's going to happen is that you will continue to attract people that on the surface seem to be the one. But when you get, you scratch the surface and you get deeper into the relationship, the other things will materialize. So all of the skills that you haven't cultivated, right? You will find lacking in your relationship from your partner. All of the ways you haven't healed, you will find the reciprocal wounds in your partner. All of the ways that you are shallow, you will find areas of shallowness in your partner. So if you've got anything from this podcast, I really hope that you take that if you want to attract somebody of value, which in my heart of hearts, I hope you find, I hope you find the most valuable, the most uh, fulfilling relationships. That's, you know, what I do for a living. It's, you know, it's my purpose, but I am doing nobody a service to not reflect back that if you want somebody of value, you have to become valuable. And in the doing so, you're not only um, becoming more magnetic, but you're basically transmitting to the world and to the universe your own value, your own fullness, your own depth. And I, I've seen enough now to know that people like that do not stay alone very long. People like that are, they stand out. People like that um, are so attractive regardless of physical looks, right? People who are really in their bodies and, um, and in their hearts and are able to express themselves fully, but also have mastered themselves in some way. Those are the people that are incredibly attractive and are incredibly, incredibly valuable. And those are the people that uh, the universe will just deliver new prospects to. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. It really helps us to get the content out. Also, feel free to leave a question or if there's something specific that you want me to cover on a future episode, leave that as well. We will check them. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please uh, rate and review. It also helps us to get the content out. So I hope this was helpful. As I said earlier, if you want to dive deeper into this content or deeper into these practices, please join us on the Embodied Relationship Experience platform. We have hundreds of practices and thousands of hours of content diving even more into these concepts.
There's a link below if you want to join us and uh, we'd love to see you. So there's a seven day free trial if you want to just come in and check it out. But other than that, I will see you next time. Thank you for joining me on the Embodied Relationship Experience.